By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my pink weenie deck against Thais' mono green build. And he's playing with some really nice and interesting cards. He has made some interesting choices in this deck that you'll see in this particular game. Now, the, the lighting is not perfect here, so I apologize for that, but still it's going to be interesting to see Thijs' deck and the choices he's made, and I'm sure you'll recognize the art. So here I go with a turn one factory, and he has a turn one Lana or Elves. Very good here, swing in for two, going to 18. Obviously, he's not going to block. Now, let's see what he can do with three mana. And there we see the Arabian Knight Asp, followed by the Pixies from Antiquities. And I'm tapping a, am I tapping a white or red? I don't know, I'm playing a plateau. I believe I'm, I'm now paying a white mana and asking what the cards do and I'm choosing to destroy the uh, Pixies here because it has protection from artifacts or the damage done by artifacts is reduced to zero. So that means that I couldn't attack with my uh, Mishra's Factory, so I want to do that. So now he's on uh, 16, I believe, because he's not blocking. Wouldn't have been a great choice. And he's now attacking with the Lanor Elves and the Asp. And the Asp is quite interesting because it reads, if Asp inflicts any damage to your opponent, your opponent must spend one before the draw phase of his or her turn or lose one life. So you get an Asp counter. You can see that there. There's this poisonous counter to remind me that I've been bitten by the Asp, and before my draw phase, so untap, step, or upkeep, I need to decide, am I going to pay the one mana? And as you can see, I've decided not to, so I'm taking an extra damage. So the Asp, for a long time, was kind of underestimated as a card, but it's actually very good, because in a lot of uh, circumstances, it deals two damage. And then there's the other card from Antiquities, that's the Asban Ogre, and the Asban Ogre is one green mana for 2-2, two -two, which is insane. But what it also says is, during its current controller's upkeep, the player with the highest life total takes control of the Ogre. So in other words, if I can manage to gain more life than Thais, uh, you know, I can get in control. But right now I'm on 11, so it's not really going to work. And another great card, I love this. It's hard to see because of the light, but this is actually a spitting slug. It's a 2-4 creature for 3 mana, and it's from green. And it has this weird first strike ability. So if you don't know what it does, look it up. It's it's worth your trouble. So I'm playing a Stone Rain here. It's not the best play that I can make. Because his green deck obviously doesn't need a lot of mana. I'm on 11 now. And he has a lot of, you know, for weenie creatures, he has a lot of power there on the battlefield. That's 5 power. Well, he's only swinging with 4, but still, I'm down to 7. This is going to be really difficult. And... He's playing a scavenger folk and another spinning slug. What I need now is a balance that could save me or a wrath of God, but I'm not playing that in this deck. Playing a lightning bolt to take care of, okay, I guess a scavenger folk so he cannot destroy my mistress factory and I can now use it as a blocker. I think that's probably the idea behind it. So hoping that he doesn't attack with his ogre, but he decides to attack with everything. So I'm blocking his ogre, his 2-2. So it's 2-2 two, two dies. And I kind of like this play, actually. Just playing aggressive. I'm on 7. Now I'm on 2. Instead of going safe. You know, I don't think when you're playing weenie, you should go safe. And I'm showing him my hand here. And it was filled with Sarah Angels that I could do nothing with. So Tice has won this first game with his aggressive green build. Congratulations, Tice. Now let's go on to game number 2. Game number 2. And I'm on the play here. So far, I don't seem to be very lucky with my pink weenie deck, but it's really nice to see um, the choices that Thais has made to really go for value there. A spitting slot means for three mana you get get a 2-4. Uh, the Asp is 1-1 one, one for one, but usually gets in the extra points of damage, especially early game. You've got the Ogre, which is a risky card to play because it can just go to the opponent if he's ahead on life. But on the other hand, um, you know, it's a 2-2 two, two for one, so, so he's getting a lot of value. A Lunar Elf obviously is a great value card, giving you the extra mana when it's your go. So I'm curious to see um, what other cards he, ha he has. And it, it's it's nice to see somebody 
um, who hasn't made all the obvious choices. And I guess the, the ASP these days is an obvious choice, but that's only something of the last, I think, two years or so that people are really starting to actively choose the ASP to, as a card to actually play with. Um, here we see me having a great start. There's Savannah line turn one. That's exactly what you want to have here. Swing in. He's down to 18 and playing another Savannah line. So putting a lot of pressure here on the board. And obviously green always has difficulty with removal. So when you have a green deck, you'll probably have to solve your problems with combat, which is kind of hard. He's not finding that second land, it seems. Does have that Lunar Elf, but remember with his deck, he probably wants that third mana to play Spitting Slugs, which are fantastic blockers against these Savannah lines. And do you really want to trade something? Uh, stepping here for green, sticking it back. Interesting, maybe thinking about casting a Giant Growth, I have no idea. Um, deciding here to trade, so it's taking two extra damage. And there's a Mishra's Factory. And I'm probably going to flip on on the Elf here, because it also represents a land. And let's look at that flip in slow-mo. Here he goes. Bam! And that's a nice flip, if I say so myself. And that means the Lunar Elves is gone, and this is looking very problematic there for Dice. I mean, if you would play white, for instance, you would still have a balance, or... You know, red, you would still have an Earthquake, but this is, this is hard. On the other hand, he doesn't need a lot of mana with this deck. But I've got pressure here on the board, activating my Factory, attacking with my line, so he's taking another 4 damage. He's going down to 12. But he's still in this. Obviously, if you're alive, you're still in this. And remember, his Scavenger Folk now no longer has Summoning Sickness. So if I activate, okay, he's using his mana, he's playing a Whirling Dervish. And passing turn. So again, he's going for the value there. With Whirling Dervish, he's one of those creatures that, especially long term, can give you a lot of value. So he's playing it main board. Obviously, um, you know, not playing with black, it's not the best card here. And we see Thais is tweaking his camera a little bit there. And I'm attacking and interesting, doesn't want to sacrifice his Dervish there to that Savannah line. And chooses to block with the Scavenger. That means that I lose my lines and he gets two more damage. He's on 10 here. Playing at Pixies. So that's probably the reason why he chose to block here um, instead of uh, keeping a Scavenger Folk. Because he had that Pixies. So tapping here, taking a damage, playing a Fireball for three. Oh, of course not. I'm not playing a Fireball. I'm probably separating and killing both of his creatures here. And there's a Giant Grove over his Whirling Dervish. Saving his Whirling Dervish. So I was dealing one damage to each creature. And uh, that means that I'm kind of losing my attack step. I was hoping to fireball away both his creatures and get four damage in. But that plan didn't work. But he did lose his precious pixies. But he has another one. And those pixies are great when uh, are great weapons to block Mishra's factories. And I think that's one of the reasons why the pixie is, is gaining popularity. Everybody playing with... Mishra's Factories, and there you see a Swords of Plowsiers on the Pixies, and a double attack here, so I'm keeping the pressure on. And it's one of those games where I just seem to have the right cards at the right time. But so does Thais here, great, playing a Giant Grove, killing my Savannah Lines, and two damage there from the Mishra's Factory. Again, interesting that he didn't choose to kill my Factory, but maybe this is the reason playing a juggernaut here okay five three creature again one of those creatures that gives you value for just four colors mana you have an attack of uh five but oh this is brutal an earthquake here shaking the ground for three damage each great synergy there with my um uh with my mishra's factory and he's taking three more damage i'm able to do two more damage with the factory and he's losing all of his creatures and Earthquake is one of those cards that is just brutal against small creature decks, weenie decks. And there is the Lana Elves. And what am I going to do? And there's the Swords on the Elves. Probably going to swing in for two. So he's going down. He has a very low life total now. 
And that's it. That's the game. So he's saying, okay, not drawing anything. The game is yours. Means it's 1-1 one, one, and we're going to game number three. Game number three is about to start with Thijs on the play. So that's going to be a huge advantage for him here. Playing a script sprites turn one. Playing a plateau. Playing a Zavanna lines here. Passing turn. Interesting to see what he's going to do if he's going to keep his sprites untapped. Probably has a lot in his hand with such a quick deck. He has attacking. Bring me down to 19. And I wonder what creatures he's going to play out now. Oh no, there's a giant grove. Wow, and a berserks is playing very aggressively here. Dealing 8 damage here with this single swing. Means I'm on to 12. Down to 12, I should say. Um, it does mean that he's, um, yeah, lost 3 cards in total. And I'm attacking him, he's on 18. This is interesting, playing the Ogre. So that's probably one of the reasons why he decided to play so aggressively. Because with the Ogre, you need to have the higher life total or the Ogre changes sides. And knowing that I play with Lightning Bolts, uh, it's obviously very uh, threatening. Taking two more damage, go, going down to 16 here. Choosing not to block again, probably wanting to attack me. And I pass the turn, and I don't have a land here. I couldn't find a single land, so I'm on just one little plateau. And, um, you know, if if Dice could play an Ice Storm right now, it would have been pretty much the game. He doesn't, though, and he's playing a Juggernaut. Luckily for me, I have a Swords to Plows here. That does mean that he gains 5 lives. So he goes to 21, takes 2 damage, he goes down to 19 again. I'm attacking here, I'm on 8 life. He's playing another Juggernaut. This is not looking great. Okay, I got a lightning bolt. At least I manage. And no, I decide not to attack. I think that's that's a good a wise decision because I'm on eight. And now obviously that's that's a big downside of playing with his swords to plowsiers. Uh, when you when you're sourcing a juggernaut, okay, it's gone, but your opponent gets five life. And when you're in a race like this, that's not ideal. So attacking with the Asban. Choosing to block, I of course I knew from the, that he had a giant growth because he just played that regrowth on the giant growth. But what else could I do? I mean, going down to to six or potentially going down to just three life isn't really an option. Um, drawing some cards here, finding that new mana in the form of a creature as well, so that's great. And curious to see what what he will do because I can decide to block with the with the factory. I have to discard him, discarding a Sarah Angel. I haven't even been able to cast a single Sarah Angel in these games. And there, he's playing the Scavenger Folk, and I'm playing a direct, or I'm playing a, probably an end of turn Swords of Plows here, here, because I don't want him to be able to wreck my Mistress Factory. And there, <laughs> there you see some giant spiders. We're also obviously talking about just green creatures while playing, I think you saw War Mammoth earlier. And just green is such a fun color, such epic creatures in green. I'm um, taking a damage here, playing a white knight. That's a great blocker against those uh, Asban ogres. And I wonder if he's going to attack. And yes, he does. Just decides to play aggressively. Again, I think it's a good decision. And I'm killing one of the ogres here. I'm going down to five. And now that City of Brass is starting to become a problem as well. Every time I activate it, it, it really has a big impact. Here you can see I'm going from five to four, playing a second white knight. And I have to play risky here. I'm trying to get him down on life, life as well. The thing is, maybe I shouldn't play so aggressively. But the thing is, I don't want to give him time to draw into, um, into a berserk and a giant growth combination. So I'm kind of worried about that. And maybe he's gonna draw more flyers and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's kind of hard here. I now have three creatures on the board. So it looks like I've kind of stabilized. I have some lands. Obviously, the City of Brass is not ideal to, to use. I'm saying to attack with two White Knights here. So I believe he's going down here to, to 14. Attacking with the Ogre, activating my factory and blocking. And oh, this is nice. And that means end game here. Oh, I kind of thought I was winning it back. Maybe I shouldn't have attacked with the White Knights. Um, congratulations, Dice. Very nice victory here. And you've won this one, 2-1. Two let me know if you think I should have attacked with the White Knights or not. Maybe I should have just kept them as a blocker and kind of work on my on my board state a little bit further there. Um, anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school magic games, check out the playlists that are appearing right now on the screen. 
You can also check out the channel, leave a like, leave a comment. It's very much appreciated. Thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks and see you next time. Ik het was, ik het is